Hey guys, so the other week something terrible happened. Whoa, whoa, not that. My Tektronix 465B oscilloscope bit the dust. And man, this has been a workhorse oscilloscope for me for the past 10 to 15 years. Now, originally, I dug this out of a storage room closet in my high school back around, I don't know, 2015? And though some of the boards in this thing have a copyright date of 1978, the IC seemed to date this to around 1982. So yeah, this thing's been fault-free for the past 43 years. And in my opinion, now's not the time to stop. Your best years are ahead of you, buddy. So yeah. Come along with me in this hopefully short oscilloscope repair adventure. No promises. Alright, first let me try to show you what the problem here is. Alright, I got the lights dimmed down a little bit, and let's throw on the power. First of all, instead of getting a trace, we're getting more of a general glow across the face of the CRT, concentrated on the right hand side. Changing the sweep doesn't seem to do anything, and the same goes for the position controls. Yep, even in XY mode, still not seeing anything. And we've got the same story with channel 2. In addition, the scale illumination isn't doing anything, focus seems to change things a little bit, and the intensity control for the beam has no effect. Alright, it's starting to smell a little toasty, so I'll turn it off. Well, it seems like we have a lot of different faults going on at once. Which leads me to believe that this might be a power issue. I mean, if you think about it, the parts that deflect the CRT's beam don't really have anything to do with the light bulbs that illuminate the scale in the front. Except for where they get their power from. You know, I think I have a pretty good idea of what's causing this, but let's start with rule number one. Thou shalt check voltages. Thankfully, Tektronix has made this scope extremely serviceable and has provided us with test points right here to check the different voltages. And we'll clip onto our ground point up here. Let's turn our scope on and start checking the voltages. Okay, 110 volts. It's close enough. Plus 5. Ooh, and that's looking pretty bad. Got plus 55. And yeah, some pretty significant voltage drop there. All right, it's kind of hard to see from underneath this wiring loom, but this should be plus 15 volts. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, yeah, close to zero. And minus 8 volts, which is way off. Next, I'm going to switch the multimeter into a continuity mode to check for shorts to ground. By the way, we're not getting any voltage to these test points anymore. I checked off camera, but make sure you do that. Okay, 110 looked good. Eh, plus 5 is doing alright. That beep you heard from plus 5 momentarily was probably a filter capacitor charging up from ground. It's totally normal. Plus 55, that's fine. Negative 15. Ooh, that's like a dead short. Let me switch it over to resistance. Yeah, that's pretty close. And then our minus eight. Eh. It's not too bad. I'll try switching the polarity around a little bit. Yeah. Yep, it looks like we got a dead short on that plus 15 volt rail. So now, let's take a look at the schematics for the power supply board. Here we have our schematic for the power supply section of our Tektronix 465B oscilloscope. And this over here is our 15 volt rail. Now, something here is pulling this 15 volts to ground. The fault could be somewhere in this voltage regulation circuit, probably not this bridge rectifier, given the nature of these components conducting electricity this way, or it could be somewhere further down the line, to something the 15 volt circuit is connected to. 
I doubt it's going to be either of these transistors since we'd see a 15k resistance to ground. And probably not this op amp here either since the inputs are specifically designed to conduct as little current as possible. But you know what? This guy right here gives me a little pause. I mean, honestly, it could be this diode or this capacitor, but I'm willing to bet that this capacitor is going to be the source of all our issues. What do we got? C4331. All right, we got a physical board layout here. You see the resemblance? All right, and our C4331 capacitor should be right around here. Yeah, we got this opening in the PCB here, this big one, and this little mounting screw. So it should be this green guy right here. All right, where were we? Okay, I'll uh, clip in right to ground. Move this wire loom out of the way. And clip onto our 15 volts. Let's see. Whoop. Get off there. <laughs> yeah, that's one way of doing it. Yeah, check this out. Now, if I probe this capacitor, got a six ohm short. You see, these are tantalum capacitors. Now, over time, these things tend to fail, I think due to moisture ingress, and their failure mode is essentially causing a dead short. Or I guess in our case, not quite a dead short, but like six ohms is pretty close. Now, unfortunately, this board's got them all over the place, which means, yeah, sure, this might cause future John some headaches, but at least you'll have a good idea of what's going on. Will these tantalum capacitors fail in the future? Yeah, probably. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But just as kind of a public service announcement, if you find yourself working on vintage electronics like this, eventually you will stumble across these tantalum capacitors, which will give you trouble. Now what was this one? 47 microfarads? 20 volts? Unfortunately, I don't have any replacement tantalum caps at 47 microfarads. But I do have some electrolytics. Shouldn't matter all too much anyway. I think this is just a filter cap or rather a reservoir cap. Basically, if a circuit wants 15 volts all of a sudden, this little capacitor should act kind of like a reservoir and give it a little current boost without dropping the voltage. Or it could be acting just like a filter cap to cut down on ripple. Alrighty, let's see how we've done. We got. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Turn the intensity way down. Switch over to another sweep. Oh, oh there we go. Look at that. Get you into focus. Scale illumination is hard to see, but it works now. Yeah, there's our one kilohertz test signal. And let's double check those voltages. 110, pretty close. Plus five, bang on. 55, hey, look at that. And there's our plus 15 volts. And minus eight. And there we go. That's how one capacitor can take down an entire oscilloscope. But you know what? While I'm at it, this is the predecessor to the 465B, the 465. 
I picked it up from an auction house for 20 bucks, and it was supposed to be my drop-in replacement in case the 465B failed. Which it was. For about 10 minutes. Yeah, I was really confused when I hooked this up to a circuit under test, left the room for a minute, and came back to find another dead scope. I kept thinking, what's wrong with the circuit I'm designing? It's like 5 volts TTL logic, right? Well, other than ruling out that the circuit I was working on might be cursed. Still an option. I'm assuming that since they're roughly the same vintage with similar problems, they might have similar faults. As you can see, nothing on the screen. Focus and intensity don't do anything. However, the uncow lights still work. So let's crack this bad boy open and see if we can do anything about it. Alrighty. Got the scope opened up, and it looks like we have the same slew of test points here. Clipped onto ground. Let's first check 110. Pretty close. Plus 5. Ooh, that is bad. Plus 55. It's pretty close. Our plus 15. Pretty close. And our minus 8, which is also pretty close. All right, now switching over to continuity. And we've also got the scope turned off and unplugged. Well, it doesn't seem to be a shorted tantalum this time. But we're definitely not getting plus 5 volts. Okay, so we should be seeing 5 volts on the 5 volt rail. But we're not. Now switching over to resistance, measuring the resistance coming off the 5 volt rail is a little over 100 ohms. Which is like, what, 50 milliamps? I'd be really surprised if this circuit couldn't provide that much current. So let's trace things back and see if we can measure anything on this unregulated 5 volt rail. And that should be on the collector of Q1556, which is this guy down here. And yeah, we're only getting half a volt there. So tracing that back, it looks like the only three components that could have failed are this capacitor, this bridge rectifier, or the windings in the transformer. All right, I'm going to switch over to volts AC, and it looks like our 5 volt winding from the transformer taps into these two points here. And it looks like we're getting about 9 volts unregulated. So it looks like the windings on this transformer are good. Now let's check the capacitor. We've got the capacitance setting here. And this should give us a rough estimate. We've got the ground terminal of our capacitor right here, and the positive terminal right here. We've got around 75,000 microfarads, which is pretty off from the 5,000 indicated by the schematic. However, since this is just a rough test and it's in circuit, it doesn't seem like the capacitor is the failure point. Also, its internal resistance is way too high to be pulling anything to ground. Which I guess just leaves us with this component right here, the bridge rectifier. It's this little guy over here. Yeah, check out this hack job. Turns out a bunch of the connectors up top are soldered in, so... I just hope I don't flex the board too much. Well, that was a bit of a nightmare to remove. Luckily, last time I was at Axeman Surplus, I just so happened to pick up some bridge rectifiers. Would you look at that? They're even the same part number. Alright, so as you can see here... Huh. Well, off camera I tested this junction and it seemed to fault out at overload. I guess there might be an intermittent fault with this bridge rectifier? Yeah, because that's looking okay. Alright, well, it's testing fine now, but I still don't trust it away with you. Yeah, we'll just swap this part in anyway. Well, it's all put back together, and now that we have the new bridge rectifier installed, let's see if this thing fires up. Hey, look at that! We got a trace! Let's see if we can uh, 
focus that in a little bit more. Oh yeah. Well, it looks like we have a little bit of flakiness here, but it seems to work for the most part. Let's try to get a test signal on there. And that looks like a pretty solid square wave to me. And you know where this one's going. Ho oh, ho, and there we have it. Two Tektronix oscilloscopes all fixed up. Man, I could have sworn I had a third one lying around here somewhere. Where could it be? Maybe the shed? Or...